right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kuder. And today we have with us Yusuf Butros, one of my really good friends. We've been friends for a little over 20 some years. We used to grind together. I'll give you a story, actually. I love, I love stories when it comes to retail, by the way. It's one of the reasons why you and I kind of have those nostalgic moments about retail. A while back, I'm not going to mention the store names, but I bought a pair of shoes. And they were really, really freaking comfy. Really comfy. Especially like when you work in retail, right? Like you want to be comfy yeah. on your feet. About two weeks in, the shoe rips. I go back to the store and I'm like furious. Like I just paid this sum of money. And the way the manager of that store, who also happened to be the owner of that store, handled it was priceless. I walk in, he goes, this is nonsense. I am so sorry. How dare we do this? You paid this much money. You just sit down, we're gonna fix it. Goes back to the back room, gets the guy to work on the shoes, fixes it. And then he comes back, he goes, you know what? We're not able to fix it. I got you a brand new pair. Here we go. No cost to you, nothing. Don't worry about it. I'm walking in, I'm furious. And he's mad at the fact that I'm furious. That just took away all the anger that I had. It just kind of went away and I was like, wow. I'm going back to my store and this is what I'm teaching my guys. 100%. If you're defensive about what you did or whatever, you're out of touch with reality because reality is what your customer and you know there's the age old thing is like customers always right not always sometimes you know may somebody doesn't read a policy or whatever you know they don't read the i don't know something on the website or they don't know how to use the product well in the grand scheme of things that's a minority of the people and what really matters is not the transaction it's the relationship Right. Relationship is really where it's at. Any business, even if it's a small little transaction business. Especially service. I was just talking with my Uber driver about this on the way here. It's like, how do you pick your hairdresser or your barber? Why do you go to that person? Probably trust them to do a good job. Exactly. And once they've actually showed you that they can do what you want, what they what you want with your hair, your hairstyle, you have the look that you want. You keep going back because you start to develop a relationship with that person. Mm -hmm. That's how I pick my car mechanic. That's how I pick, you know, any type of service. It starts with proof that they can do the job well, and then they end up building a relationship with that person. And if something goes wrong with my car, I trust my mechanic enough that I know he will fix it because we have a relationship. If I didn't have a relationship, I should go see somebody else. Yeah. Right? Not only fix it, but fix it at, or in a way where it's actually most reasonable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not necessarily just, oh, I'm going to throw money at the problem. It's, well, what's the problem to start with? Is it really the part? Is it really, the, like, and that's the beauty about working with somebody that you can trust is that you're, you're able to kind of just let it go, let them deal with it on their own and come back with the right solution for you. Yeah, it's, it's a big peace of mind and it removes the barrier to purchasing more stuff. Now that you trust your barber, your hairdresser, if they recommend a product, in your best interest, best interest, you're likely to buy from that person. Yeah, That's where you make more money. You have to build trust. You have to build a relation. And then your sales as a business can go up to times up to 30% with the business that you already have. That's no new customer. So what are some of the ways for clients out there to really engage with you guys as far as bringing you in? Like, how is your consultation look like? How do you put a plan in place? Tell me a little bit more about that. So this is in the works right now, but I have a systems and operations audit typically that I would, do. but everything first starts with a call. We get to know each other a little bit and I really want to help people who believe in what they are doing. I think it's honorable if you are just trying to make money, but that's not the business that I'm in. I'm in to somebody who is really solving a problem at a market scale, at an industry scale, who really believes in what they're doing, who is aligned with their core purpose. Those are the best kinds of entrepreneurs because they know what their vision is. It's pretty clear to them. We get on a call and I try to understand where the issue really lies because training, in my opinion, is kind of the last piece of things but you've got to have good systems in and systems is process people and your technology or your, um, so there's a combination of those three things. If you don't have the right people, your systems fail because you need somebody to run those systems, to improve those systems, to maintain those systems. If you don't have a good processes, that's something I can help with. So we first start with the base operation. Do you have a good offer? First of all, is it something that I believe is in demand yeah. or will solve a 
unique problem for a unique avatar or ideal customer. Then if I believe that the operations are good, they're streamlined, we can actually scale this, then we get into training. And a call like that would take about an hour at the beginning just to understand if we're a fit or not. Then just a series of visits. I usually like to visit the store. Brick and mortar experience is quite unique and there is a very human element. So I like understanding what the operation looks like because there's no silver bullet to this, but you really have to nail down what the problem is. And sometimes the entrepreneur, the founder is so removed from what his people are going through, even though they're there, they're also dealing with a bunch of other stuff that employees are not. So I like to really understand the symptoms that the entrepreneur is experiencing, kind of like a doctor, and also get the employee's point of view on what is the thing that is causing the most friction. And then I put a solution together. Yeah. And it will likely be within one of those three packages. So that's just a point in time. All entrepreneurs kind of go through the same journey. Uh, but once we understand what the entrepreneur is trying to do, then we can get into the details. So I take a look at their SOPs, their systems. I may recommend switch your POS because this one's not doing anything for you. I really try to find the friction that they experience and solve for that first to get quick wins. Yeah. Yes. So it's really more about like finding the inefficiencies, if you will, in the business. Sometimes it might be the people. Sometimes it might be the processes. Sometimes it might be just the way they, they set it up. Is yes. That, that Setup is a big thing. Yeah. Like um, unless you have good bones, it's really difficult to, you know, build something really strong, right? And what I do is similar to a house, right? Every house has a foundation. They have load-bearing walls. They have running water. They have electricity. What the house looks like could be different from house to house, but they all have those. That's what systems and training is to me. That's what allows you to run your operations and remove yourself is the key thing. Because unless you can do that, you can't scale. You can't open other locations. It's impossible Yeah. unless they can run on their own. So it is a pretty thorough audit. But by the time I'm usually done, I can at least give them some really quick wins right away. That's what people want. And then we build a full project roadmap to make sure that we can create something that they can now scale mm -hmm. if that's what they're looking for. What are some of the uh, success stories that you had in the last, like, let's say? Two so I've had three clients since then. One of them was actually a cannabis retail. And we built a training program for them help them build their SOP. They were consistently doing 14% higher than the provincial average. So I would say that was one success. What I didn't mention is I'm also a founder for a company called Repair and Run, which is a professional bike, e-bike, and e-scooter repair company. And I am, as a founder, building their training program, configuring their systems, making sure that we can scale this. But we're currently at five locations and growing to 30 locations. So I would say that's on its way. We're looking to do that within the next three to five years or so. So is it fair to say like when you're looking at building a business, building a one man sort of operation or a, a one location sort of operation is completely different than building a second. Yeah, business. it's totally different. Your reporting is really different and your processes have to be more refined, but robust enough to account for the differences in your customer base, the differences in your store layout. You'll never get the same store layout every single time, mm -hmm. especially in the mall, for example, like that's where we were at mobile clinic. So you have to build your processes with that in mind. Um, and the systems that you use have to be able to handle multiple locations. And we're talking about everything from your, the way that you build your catalog to the permissions for each location to languages. You know, when you throw in Quebec, then everything has to be in French, mm -hmm. right? Your systems, your receipts, your marketing, all of your training, all of your SOPs, yeah. literally everything has to be in French. And that provides its own unique challenges as well. So when you're thinking at that scale, yeah, it's, I mean, it's really, really different. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like I can tell you from experience, like some of the organizations that I worked with before in the past, they wouldn't sell software in Quebec because of those reasons. It's like, you know, no, we can't, we just don't want to do it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of effort. I personally think it's worth it because there's so many people in Quebec, if you ignore it as a market, that's like, 30% of the country or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So it is a big lift, uh, but I think it could be worth it. For sure. For sure. What are some of the advices that you want to give out to entrepreneurs out there to, you know, look for ways to improve themselves? I would say start with the end in mind. Everybody is just kind of looking at the step in front of them, but 
a little bit of planning goes a long way. Yeah. And most people execute, but they don't strategize. And I think that has, has implications into how you develop your business. But I, you know, it's probably a biased answer, but invest more in your training. Your team is looking for the support and the training that they need, and they want to work towards something. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, you will reward yourself financially and you will get back the time that you want by not feeling like you have to be at your store all the time. And there is a really easy way to do this. Um, it's hopefully it's something that provides really value, but there are tools today that will help you write your SOPs that will save you hours a week. When before AI, I used to have to write things down on a Word, you know, Microsoft Word document, yeah. take hours and step hours. By step. And you really have to think about, okay, what has to happen in the majority of the cases and so on and so forth. Yeah. Today, you can download loom.com, for example, on your phone, record yourself doing the thing as you're talking through it, and then taking the transcript, loading it to chat GPT, and asking it to write a step-by-step -step process. Within 45 seconds, you have a document that has a video and steps that you can give to your team. Yeah, yeah. You know? And standard operating procedures have always been a thing, like especially from an, a high tech or IT standpoint, is like, you know, you could literally pick up anybody to do a level one service if you have the standard operating procedures in hand and just say, here we go. You got great customer service, follow these steps. If it gets too tough, that's level two, you transfer it off. Yeah. The more that you invest in creating skilled workers within your own company, the less you have to rely on experience when you're hiring which opens up your candidate pool greatly. Mm -hmm. I have hired so many people who had never had any previous experience because they were hungry. They were really believed in the company. They were excited, willing to learn, willing to work hard. They became some of the best employees that we had. No previous experience. I'm going to go back to, just on, on this point, I'm going to go back to a point you mentioned earlier about you hire for character, not skill. Dig a little bit more. In a retail job, you're typically hiring somebody who is doing it part time. You're not, you're not usually hiring somebody who is going to be like a lifer, mm -hmm. right? I would expect my doctor to have a degree and to have training, right? Mm -hmm. But the person who is selling me jeans or selling me shoes or doing my hair, that person took a lot less training than a doctor would, right? So I would rather build a training program so good that anyone can learn it, provided that they have the right attitude. Because in my experience, I've hired a lot of smart people. And they don't typically last if they don't share the same cultural values that your company has. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, that's bad because you have to work with other people, right? So unless those people all believe the same thing, they value the same thing, they're good team players, it really doesn't matter how good you are. Yeah. Because... You're going to have to interact with your teammates. You're going to have to interact with customers. So I, I want to go back to repair and run. What's So you, you did say that there is obviously you guys have in the works that you want to open up up to 30 stores in the next little bit. What's the plan? What's the end, end in mind that you have? I think in three to five years, we want to be in a position to get acquired, mm -hmm. like just like we did at Mobile Clinic. Who or how or what that structure looks like, I think is undecided. Um, but we understand for a fact that e-bikes and e-scooters are getting really popular. Yeah. Well, everyone and their mother is trying to sell e-bikes and e-scooters. Not a lot of people are fixing them, especially the traditional bike shop. And we want to be seen as the experts in that field. And I don't know if you follow maybe some developments by like some of the courier companies, but FedEx and Purelater now have a full suite of cargo bikes, e-bikes. Yeah. And it's, and I, I mean, anyone can notice between 2020 and now there's way more cycling infrastructure is becoming an alternative lifestyle. And in places like Toronto and Vancouver and Montreal, I mean, they are a few years ahead of us, but this is something that people are starting to realize as cities get more dense, cars are becoming less practical. Yeah. You still, I mean, a car is useful, but only in certain scenarios, right? Work in the city, live in the city, it is way easier to get around mm -hmm. using a scooter or a bike. So the plan is to expand our store network, 
to build a reputation in being the, the most trusted bike, e-bike, and e-scooter repair. What we're selling is the technician, not necessarily the service, because the relationship with the technician is what I think our brand stands for. And yeah, I think in a perfect world, we'd like to get acquired, maybe go to the States, who knows? But I think that's the overall vision for us. Yeah. So I just want to kind of finish on a high note here for folks that are looking at scaling and growing their business. What do you think the best plan of action to, you know, get in touch with you guys, get you there, get you in front of them? And where, you know, what would be the the absolute perfect outcome for them when they do that? So if you want to get in touch, you can book a call with me on my website or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on there. And the perfect outcome will really depend on the entrepreneur. But the way that I build training programs is allow people to get their freedom, make a profitable business, and eventually exit. Yeah. I think that is probably the best outcome if that's what the person, you know, if that's what the entrepreneur wants. For sure. They could also remain the CEO and keep running their operation, but they'll probably want to do it in such a way that they can get their heads out of the day-to-day operations. And that is probably the biggest obstacle for most small business owners. Yeah. Really appreciate your time, man. Ben, it's been a while since we, you know, yeah. you and I hung up and I think we, we should, we should do it more often. We should, we always have like lots of energy coming up, lots of things that, and then also reminisce on, uh, you know, yeah. guys like uh, Bruce Fowler and Brock Simmons. Those are names I haven't heard in quite some time. I do yeah. talk to Bruce actually very regularly. But uh, Yusuf, really appreciate you being on the show. We appreciate that you uh, came out here. And uh, for business owner out there, guys, please don't hesitate. Like, this is the way to grow as a business. You know, it's not always going to be, you know, think of it as, as you know, when you're going out to the moon, like you're taking out the rocket, right? Like, at some point, some things have to fall off. And those things could be yourself. It could be, you know, the people that you're training. But later on, you need to also acquire people like Yusuf here to, to come and help you out and grow the business and get you to a level where you need to be. You can reach the moon with the same sort of vehicle. You're always going to have to upscale and upgrade and, and kind of go from there. So Yusuf, thanks again for being on the show. And uh, for folks that are watching, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can get more and more episodes about this. And every time that we come up with a new episode, you can be alerted about it and, and know more about this fantastic city that we live in. Thanks.